the lust of the flesh. Preacher, preacher, tell me when you're ready to come. When I heard the lust of the flesh, I say, flesh, but the flesh is sinless. Remember, we also saw where he cut sin, circumcised the flesh. So there is no sin in the flesh. Amen. So how can there be the lust of the flesh? And I said, I question that. I couldn't come up with the answer, so I called the Bible teacher herself. And I said, Doc, tell me this. And what she explained is that because the soul needs a body to experience what it wants to experience. So when the soul peeps out, it needs the flesh to do that which is sinful. Amen. So that is why it is the lust of the flesh. Glory to God. So when your soul peeps out, it only wants what's in the world. And there's no good thing in the world. But in the Holy Ghost, there is righteousness, there is peace, and there is joy. Hallelujah. When we are in the Holy Ghost, we don't get depressed. We don't get sad and, and, and bent out of shape when things not going right. Because in God is joy. Hallelujah. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So if we stay in the Holy Ghost, then we will have all of those. And there's a scripture that ministers to me. Psalm 91. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Where is that secret place? When I, when I think of how I'm wrapped up in this Holy Ghost, I said, I'm hiding. Glory to God. Somebody say, hide me, Jesus. Hide me. Don't let me people, God, hide me. It said, hold me fast, God. Glory to God. That's the secret place. I'm in the secret place of the most high God. And I say, if you dwell there, if you live there, if you're a permanent resident there, you're not borrowing the space. It belongs to you. Glory to God. He say, if I live right there and I stay right there, it say, I will. Or is it shall? What the scripture say? Shall. Hallelujah. It means it's a future tense. Glory to God. I am going to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So look at it now. Hallelujah. I'm in the Holy Ghost. And he said, if you abide, if you live there, you shall dwell under the shadow, which means I'm always under him. I'm always in him. I'm clothed in his righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just the shadow. Hallelujah. Just the shadow. Imagine it's only his shadow. It says, Hallelujah. Glory to God. I give God thanks. Somebody need to give him thanks. Somebody need to give him thanks because you know who you are. I know who I am. Hallelujah. And I know what I am in Jesus. And I know where I live. I live in Jesus. And that is why he can say right now, hallelujah, right now I'm a son of God. I don't have to look out. He said, don't look to the left nor to the right, but look to the hills from whence cometh our help. Because our help comes from God. And we go through all different situations. But it doesn't matter what you're going through. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Because I'm in him. Then he's not going anywhere. Leave me. Hallelujah. He said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all my life. And I will dwell. Hallelujah. In the house of the Lord, I shall dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. And when I'm in the shadow of the Almighty, nothing can stir me. Nothing can move me. He said, I'm distressed, distressed but not perplexed. You know the scripture. Cast down but not destroyed. Hallelujah. He said, it doesn't matter what is happening. I can stand. And I will stand because I'm standing on a solid rock. Because I'm standing in Jesus. He's my shield. He's my butler. Hallelujah. So we give him thanks this morning. We give him thanks. Come on. Let us give him thanks this morning. Hallelujah. Because he hide us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. He's my strength. He's my fortress. He's my shield. Hallelujah. He is my all in all. Hallelujah. Is he your all in all this morning? 
He is my all in all. God is my all in all. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Let me hear you clap him this morning. Hallelujah. Because he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. He is worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. We give God thanks as we bring to you. Hallelujah. Our psalmist. Glory to God that God has blessed. He's going to bless us this morning with a song. And that psalmist is Sister Judy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. We give God praise. Hallelujah. God is good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Whoa, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the whole Lamb of God. Oh, wash me your precious blood my Jesus Christ my Lamb of God I worship and I adore you I put no one before you Oh, your King of Kings, the great Lord I am. Oh, 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 oh. angels bow before you. Heaven and earth adore you. Oh, I love you. I was so lost. I should have died. But you brought me here. You brought me here. To your side to be led by your staff and your rod, and you changed my name from Judy to a lamb of God. Oh, lamb of Sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy, Holy, Holy Lamb, Holy Lamb of God. Wash me, your, 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 your precious blood my Jesus Christ my lamb oh God so I play Allegiance to the Lamb with all my strength, 
allegiance we put our hands at our hearts and we say yes some people pledge to their countries some people pledge to their presidents their prime ministers but this morning we will pledge our allegiance to the king of kings Hallelujah. and to the lord of lords yeah. Jesus Christ our oh, Lord and Savior, allegiance.
may be seated in his presence. Bless you, Father. We honor you today. Hallelujah. God is good, saints. He's a good God. No matter what's going on in your life, God is a good God. Hallelujah. No matter what, he's a good God. Amen. I love the Lord this morning, and I pray that you do too. Amen. We've been getting a lot of feedback from the fast track. Amen. So many, so many people have called and declared how blessed they were. Amen. Pastors have been responding tremendously. They even want to work with us and help us out with getting this word out into this nation. You know, God is good. And I, I, I was sharing with some of the ministers that came up yesterday. I was sort of ambushed. Amen. And it was so good. Discipleship is good, saints. It's just a good thing, amen, that we have such a grave responsibility. The responsibility that God has given us to get this word out is awesome, and it cannot be belittled. It's, it's not for us to belittle that. We've got to see this responsibility. We've got to embrace it. We've got to believe in it. The Lord has has really, really been faithful to us. And I was sharing with them how, with the, with the pastors yesterday, how um, in our little pastoral meeting, how um, in all the years that I've been ministering, the most defining of all, the, I've seen miracles, take place through this ministry I've seen a lot of lives changed and you know things happen but I think the most defining moment for me of the apostolic anointing was the world conference this word that God has given us is a revelation of Christ in the church and um, in talking to God I was talking to the Lord yesterday and the Lord is continuing to talk to me about this word he's continuing to take me deeper into the revelation of Christ in the church and I was writing the study guide for, for the upcoming Founders Week. And the Lord shared some things with me. He, he said, have you considered? You know, that's just, that's just like the Lord. You know, he just, have you considered this? Or have you considered that? And, and he just began to talk to me. And I, I just kind of leaned back in the chair. And I said, Lord, this salvation that you have given us is indeed a mystery. That there is no finding out except God reveal it. You cannot find it out except God reveal it. Amen. Our national president and her husband is in the back. Come on, come on up. I told you, I want to look in your eyeballs when you come around. Amen. Brother and sister Day, come on up. We got a couple of chairs up front up here. <laughs> it's her birthday, saints. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. We got a table right here with the with uh, the pastors, Pastor Normans. Norman, uh, their table, the Norman table there. Amen. 
glory to God. Amen. Me and, me, and, me and Brother Day got a thing going on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. And they are just, amen. They just bless my soul. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Let's go a little bit further this morning. Amen. Can we just go a little bit further in the word? I want you to get your Bibles, and you, if you have your, your study guide from the conference, from leadership or world conference, either, either one, you can take, your, take these notes inside of there. I want to go into the book of Colossians. I was, I was torn between, I'm t- I was trying to let the Holy Spirit tell me which one he wanted me to deal with this morning. Um... But I'm writing an exposition on this book, Colossians. I've been instructed by the Lord to to do an expository on the New Testament. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's start. um, Hallelujah. Let's start reading in the first chapter in the 21st verse. Colossians 1, 21. Mm-hmm. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. Okay. Now, notice, notice, notice this, and this is something that, that we must, you know, embrace. We need to embrace this. And you that were sometimes what? Alienated. alienated. Now, um... He has reconciled us. We were alienated, cut off from God, right? But now God has reconciled us. I want us to understand something here, and that is that not only were we reconciled because we, and we know that we were because we're saved, we're full of the Holy Spirit, but the world was reconciled. Are are you hearing God? Amen. The world was reconciled. He, the scripture tells us that he didn't only die for our sins, but he died for the sins of the whole world. Isn't that right? So what does that really say to us? What is reconciliation, amen, in, from God's perspective? From God's perspective, what is reconciliation? That's something that we need to understand. We need to understand what reconciliation is. Um, there's a scripture, and someone can look it up. That, uh, that says that we were reconciled by his death, but saved by his life. Do you remember that? Someone find that scripture for us, amen, so we can document it. So if we were reconciled by his death, yet saved by his life, what is the difference between reconciliation and, and uh, salvation? There has to be a difference. Amen? Are you following me here? Romans 5 and 10 is where that scripture is found, according to our pastor there. One day I'll know my Bible as well as you guys. Amen. 
Now read that, read that verse 4. Romans 5 and 10. Mm -hmm. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, mm -hmm. much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Okay. Being reconciled by his death, but saved by his life. Is this not this, this, the same as the thing that he's saying to the church over here at Colossians? He's, he, he called us enemies in, in, um, Roman, in the book of Romans, and over here in the book of Colossians, he, Colossians, he calls us enemies. He said that we were enemies, right, and alienated. Now, hallelujah. Reconcile simply means that we now have access, that we can approach we can approach God. We can make our requests. But now if you are not saved, the only request that you have the right to make is for forgiveness. We can go to God and ask for forgiveness. That's the one that God honors from sinners. That's the one he honors from sinners that he, is, that he has obligated himself to honor because his son died so that we might have access. Are you hearing God? He, he, his son died so that we could ask God to forgive us for our sins. If Jesus had not died and paid for our sins, we would not have that kind of access to God. Are you hearing me? We would not have that access to God. Amen. But because Jesus has, has gone ahead and, and died for all the sins of the world, for the sins of the whole world, for God so loved the world, then say, for God so loved the church. Scripture say he loved the world. Is that right? Yeah. That he gave his only begotten son. Now we see that, and this is very important, because we see that in the sense that anyone, because if God didn't die, if Jesus didn't die for the entire world, then that means that only a certain, um, certain amount of people, a, a select few people, are able to get saved. That would not be fair. Is that right? That would not be fair. Glory to God. Because there are no dimensions on sin. Glory to God. All of us were sinners. Is that right? All of us were sinners. The only thing that distinguishes us from some sinners is that God has, God has the gift of foreknowledge and foresight. And he knows those who will choose him. He knows those who will choose to accept the grace that he has given. He knows that beforehand. Glory to God. So we all have access to God by Jesus Christ. That's the only access we have, though. We have to come by Jesus. That means that Jesus is the reconciler. He's the one that died. So when we come and ask God for forgiveness, we must come in the name of Jesus or believing in the, the work that Jesus did, the sacrifice that Jesus made. We have to come believing in that sacrifice. Are you hearing God? Amen. Glory to God. Notice what he says here. We were enemies in, in your mind by wicked works. Wicked works. Yet now have he reconciled. We were wicked, so there's nothing. We can't look at ourselves and say that we earned this. There's no way we deserved salvation. God termed us wicked. And this is why I, I don't understand how, how some can, can look at this and see how, how if God termed us as wicked, evil, and enemies. See, because anything that comes up against, anything that is contrary to the word of God is an enemy of God. That's one of the things that I purpose never to be. I don't want to become God's enemy. But when, you know, I, I've, over the years, I've had to talk to some people, even ministers, and I've said to, I've said to them, and this is the truth before God, I've, I've said to, to, to some ministers, I said, sweetheart, you may not like me, you may not, Receive me, 
And you may attack me. You may attack my character, assass assassinate my character. Whatever you can do to me, you may do it. But please, please don't attack the word. Because when you attack me, I'm going to go to my father and ask him to forgive you. I'm going to forgive you, and I'm going to ask my father to forgive you. So there's hope for you if you attack me. Leave it with me. If you feel it necessary to attack me, discredit me, dishonor me, whatever. Okay, that's all right, because I can bear that. I can handle that. That's no, that's no issue with me, glory to God. And it's not going to change my love for anybody. However, don't attack the word of God. Because the word will turn on you. The word will, will protect itself. The Lord said he watch over his word. And you know what else God said about his word? He esteemed his word above his name. So I say, I say to, to leaders, I say, I've said to many leaders, I've said, don't, don't attack the word of God. Don't attack it. Don't discredit it. Don't, don't, don't dishonor it. Because then now you provoke God. You, you provoke God. You, you, you insist upon God moving his hand against you. And I've never known anyone to attack the word of God and survive. Not this word. And survive. Not the truth. I've never known anyone to attack the truth and come out of it in good standing. Never. So, let us be very conscious of the fact that God has given us a word and we that are carrying this word, must not dishonor it. We must not dishonor this word. We've got to walk in this word. We can't just go around talking about it and telling folks about it. We've got to be a living example of this word. One thing this word ought to do, I, I shared this with the pastors yesterday. One of the things that this word ought to do, and, 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 and let me share it with you guys. If you're, and, and this is not happening to you, you're missing something. You're missing it. When you really understand this word, when you really hear it and get it, you know what it, you know what it does first, Paula? It makes you happy. Anybody, am I the only, do I have any witnesses? <laughs> Ricky, make you happy? Huh? Jeanette, make you happy? Sam, Nigel, glory to God, Sharon Yap Chum, about to jump out of her seat. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. When you really get this word, when you, if you're hearing it you're, and understanding it, Clifton, you've been bouncing around here like a, <laughs> like, like a jack out of the box. Praise you, Jesus. Um, when you're really getting it, when you're really hearing it, it lifts something off you. Judy, you getting it? Amen. Colleen, you have been so light. <laughs> She has been so light and, and just preaching. Glory to God. You know, when you're really getting this, Pat, you're getting it. It, it ought to make you light. It ought to make you happy. It, 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 it brings a smile to your face. Amen. It, it brings joy. And if you're not feeling that joy, you're not getting it. You're missing something here. You're missing it. And, when, and if you're missing it, let me show you something. And, and see, I, I just deal straight up, saints. I just, I just tell it like it is. If you're missing this, if you're not getting this, you have to, it, because this, the people that are getting it, the people that are being blessed by it, they're, and, and let, let me just kill this devil. Let me kill him first. Amen. It's not just the leaders that are getting this. Are there any people in here that are not pastors that's getting this? Stand on your feet. If, you, if this thing is making you happy, glory to God, and you're, you're getting this thing, amen, I, I, amen, you're not a pastor. Just a, a, hallelujah. 
Come on, let's give God some praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Glory to God. You, you, you see, I, see, the devil will say, well, you know, that, that, that's that little click. That little click got it. No, uh it's, it's not just, it's not, it, this, this word here has a life of its own. Hasa. Glory to God. This word is shocking me. I mean, I am moving in God. Amen. That's why the enemy is attacking my body so, glory to God, because he can't, he, he has nothing in me anymore. <laughs> he has nothing in me, so he's got to attack the flesh. Amen. But I told Jesus that now Jesus is your flesh too. So, hello. <laughs> you, glory to God. He bring me down, he bringing you down. <laughs> Praise your Jesus. You got to keep it going. Praise the Lord. But, but this word makes you happy. This word, it, it, lifts, it lifts some weights off of you. Come on, saints. Even if you're going through some terrible situation, this word is a comforter. It is. It's, it's a comforter. And we begin to feel the comfort of the word. We, and because there's a joy in it. And, and uh, as um, one of the young pastors said, that this is a... This, 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 this word has a life of its own. That's the best way to explain it. It has a life of its own. And, this, and, and it's moving in us. You know, we used to sing a song in, in tradition, back when I was in, in tradition, glory to God, in the traditional church. Everything wasn't bad about the traditional church, saints. I'm telling you, some of that stuff we need to adopt. Praise the Lord. But we used to sing a song that these young people, they wouldn't dare sing today. Glory to God. Amen. Because, you know, they're into contemporary. Temporary, which for, for all con purposes is temporary. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. But the songs, that, the songs that we sing, that we sang back then, they still going on right now. Amen. Glory to God. Hey, hallelujah. And, 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 and I could, I, there was a song we sing that says, I could feel God scratching out in me. Yeah. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's another one we used to sing, Word brought me here. Word brought me here. <laughs> hallelujah. Glory to God. So, hallelujah. Mm. Saints, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Glory to God. This word, this word brings you alive unto God. Amen. And you know what else it does? It brings your members alive. It brings your body alive unto God. Are you experiencing that? It brings your body alive alive unto God. I'm excited about that. I am really, really excited about that. Praise the Lord. So if you're not getting this, let me, let me just say this. If you're not getting it, you have to be honest with yourself and ask why. Why are you not getting it? Why are you not getting it? What is God? I'm sitting in the same building I'm hearing the same thing everyone else is hearing. The person next to me is joyful about this word. Why am I not? I am saved, Lord. I'm full of the Holy Spirit. But I'm not, I don't get this. I'm not getting this. You got to ask yourself why. Because the answer is within you. It's not, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't. It's not fruitful to ask anybody else why you're not getting it. The answer is within you. You've got to judge yourself. Why am I not getting it? You know, one of the things that, that um, uh, you know, um, when I was, I was talking to, with the, you know, the pastors yesterday, uh, all those pastors showed up, amen, and, um, and I, was just, I was just looking, I was telling Pastor George, he, I was, I was saying to him, I said, you know, just sitting watching you minister with, with, with the anointing. He has an apostolic anointing. He has that anointing. He's under that apostolic umbrella, and now that apostolic anointing is resting up, upon him. Glory to God. Do you hear? Do you, do you see it in George? Amen. And Carlene Leverage, glory to God, she was, she was, I was listening to her yesterday, and she just so on. She is just so on with this message. Glory to God. She, God has visited those people. They, they have embraced this thing. And just in general conversation, when you talk to different people, amen, you hear the message. You hear it ex 
exuding through, their, through them. You know, it just, it's just coming out. They're regurgitating, glory to God, and it's just coming out. If that's not happening to you, you've got to ask why. I, there was a, 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 an individual that sat through three days of straight days of teaching of this word and didn't get anything. Didn't get anything out of it. So then one of the pastors said, you need to get the study guide and you read it. You need to read it. And then when they called me, I said, you need to get the study guide and read it. <laughs> I didn't know the other pastor had told him the same thing. Said, you need to read it. Get the videos and study them. And that's what they did. This, this particular person did that and then went and, and taught one lesson and called me and said, Doc, this word is amazing. I just, all the, I, he, and, and the thing that really, really blessed him, the thing that really blessed him, he said, I taught one message and my church is changing already. Hallelujah. He said, the people are just changing in one message. I said, that is the power of the real word. That's the power of the real word. Notice that in the scriptures that the, the disciples would teach one word and people would get saved. They would, they, they, they would preach one message and thousands of people got saved. Amen. And what's happening to us is that we're, we're already saved. We're already saved, but now we're discovering what our salvation really is. Amen. So it's almost like we're getting saved all over again. Isn't that right? And that's why you're so happy. That's why you're so happy because you got a revelation of your salvation. Amen? Praise the Lord. So ask yourself why. If you're sitting here, if you're sitting here and you're, you're, you're in the same, you're in the same room hearing the same thing, and if you're not feeling the same way that these other people are feeling, then you got to ask yourself why. It's if you're saved already, if you already have the Holy Spirit, you need to ask, why don't I feel that? Because you know what? People that are not saved, that are listening to this word, are getting excited about it. That's just the truth. There's some people that, that haven't received the Holy Ghost yet, but they're hearing this word and they're getting excited. Amen. Because it's bringing hope to them. They're, they, they, they're beginning to understand it. They're beginning to see the plan of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So ask yourself why. What is it in me, Lord, that is, is, is hindering me? What is the impediment? What is my impediment? What is it? Tell me, Lord, so I can fix it. Bless the Lord. Read, Pastor. In the body of his flesh, mm -hmm. through, through death. To he reconciled us, right? In the body of his flesh. Mm -hmm. Through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Mm -hmm. If you continue in the faith, grounded and... Now, now wait a minute, Pastor. Let's, let's look at this. Jesus has reconciled us, right? In the body of his flesh through death. Notice what it says here. In the body of his flesh through death. You know what he's describing here? Does anyone know what he's describing here? He's describing atonement. You, do you see that? He's just, what, is, what is the definition of atonement? At one with? Glory to God. Notice what he says. If Pastor, if you start back reading here. Um, in the 22nd verse. In the body of his flesh through death. Mm -hmm. To present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Mm -hmm. If you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. Where of I, Paul, am made a minister. Now, notice what it says here. There are two things we need to look at here. First of all, we were reconciled to God by the death of Jesus Christ. But now notice what he says here. 
he says, he says that to present you holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. Now, we were, the scripture tells us in Romans 6 that as many of us as us as received Christ were baptized into his what? Into his death. Glory to God. That's what this writer here, Paul, is saying as well. Well, he, he, he also said it. Paul was the one that wrote Romans. But he's saying that we were actually baptized into his death. That's what he, he gives us the detail in Romans 6. He gives us the details of what he's saying here. Glory to God. We were made at one. In other words, God can, I want you to see this. You, you, you know, Jesus, over, Jesus is way over here. He dies 2,000 years ago. And then you come along. Glory to God, I thought I had a pen. You come along. I do. You come along today, 2014, and you say, I want to be saved. This is the death of Christ over here on the cross. And you say, I want to be saved, Lord. And the Lord said, well, meet the criteria. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? And if you believe that in your heart, believe it with your heart, that means everything about you, your every fiber of your being. You believe that Jesus died for your sins. Glory to God. And you accept him as Lord, you accept him as your salvation, then the Lord takes you from 2014 into A.D. 33, or A.D. 34, might have been 34, A.D. 34, it was 33 and a half years, glory to God, into that, that death of Jesus Christ. He baptized you into that death. Are you hearing God? He baptized you into that death because now he's, what is, what is he doing? God is operating in the spirit world. So he's making you at one with that. Are you hearing God? He's making you at one with the death. So it's even as if you were right there on the cross with Jesus. Are you hearing God? That's what he's teaching here as well. And I want, I want, to, I want all you ministers to understand that. Praise the Lord. But notice something else that he says here. He says that you were reconciled now, you were reconciled so that you could be presented, that he wants to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If, look at this colon here, and he's explaining how that will take place. He says, if you continue in the what? Faith. Faith. Grounded and what? Settled. Settled. And be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Which we have heard. And which we have pre which was preached to every creature. In other words, every new creature that is in Christ could not get in him except he heard the gospel. That's the only way into Christ. You got to hear the gospel. That's why the scriptures say in Romans 10, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach at least he be sent? And that's why you have a lot of people that, are, that, are, that say that they're saved but are not. Because they're listening to what's supposed to be the gospel from people that were not sent to preach the gospel. Hello. Are you hearing God? Amen. And many times uh, they're not under that anointing because sent means anointed, anointed by God. Amen. Instructed by God. And one of the things that, that God said to me almost 30 years ago, our first school of the prophets, I keep reminding uh, us of this, in our first school of the prophets, the Lord said to me that 80% of, the, of what we call the body of Christ is not saved. 80% of the people that confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior are not saved. They are not saved. God said, I don't know them. 80%. That's eight out of every 10 so-called Christians. But what was even more amazing, he said 90% of those who are preaching the gospel, I didn't call. Now that says a lot. That says a lot. Let me, let me say this to you, saints. 
One of the things that you have to be very careful of, you have to be very careful of acquiescing. Acquiescing. Acquiescing to what, Dr. Banks? Acquiescing to this world. Acquiescing to, to the state of affairs. In other words, in other words, you can hear God say something. For instance, uh, let me give you a very good example. Ephesians 4 and 12, 11 and 12 says that he gave the fivefold ministry gifts for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the fullness of the stature of the man Jesus Christ. Now you, now you, you, hear, what, you hear what that, that's a prophetic word. It says, now he gave, he put the fivefold ministry. God installed the fivefold ministry in the church. God put it in the church. And he put it in the church to do something. Right? He put it in the church to edify the saints. Hmm? To perfect the saints. Is that right? But he also said, till we all come. That ministry is there to bring us to the fullness of the stature of the man Jesus Christ and bring us to the unity of the faith. To bring the church to the unity of the faith. Now, what do I mean by acquiescing? You, you might be one, <laughs> you might be one that will look at the state of the church, its disposition now. And you might look at that and say, there's no way that we're ever going to be unified. There's no way that, that the church will ever be unified. Now, that's just like Israel getting to the Red, getting, getting to the River Jordan, sending spies in the land, spying it out, coming back with a report that says there's giants over there. There's no way we can occupy that land. When God has said, you go, I'll drive the giants out. Amen. And that's, and, and that's getting a report, getting a visual, making a visual assessment. They made a visual assessment. They said, these guys are bigger than us. These guys know how to fight. We've been, we've been slaves all our lives. Amen. We don't, and, and we look like grasshoppers compared to them. Now, God, now forget about the fact that God said, that he'll, he'll, he'll fight the battle for them. Forget about that. That he said he would drive them out. Forget about that. What did they do? They relied on their own visual assessment. They relied on their own visual assessment. And, and if, you, if you acquiesce, if you look at the church now and see how disjointed it is and how, you know, how disunified it is, it's, it's, it's de definitely not unified. Glory to God. And you look at it and you say, there's no way that we're going to come to the unity of the faith. You, you don't know God. You have, you're, you're undermining God. Because God said so. Now, what we call the church and what God called the church is two different things. Because everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is not a part of his church. Come on. They're not a part of his church. Glory to God. They're, because there's some people that will not hear God. They simply will not hear God. And one of the things that Jesus said to his disciples before he left, that he, um, he said the Son of Man is going to thoroughly purge his floor. He's gonna, he, there's going to be a separator of wheat and tear. Amen. And, and, when it's, and when it's all done, there's going to be a real church. But before the Lord returns, you're going to see this church unified. And there may be, and it, it, I'm, I guarantee the structure of it will not be what you see now. It will not be structured the way you see it now. With all these different denominations and, 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 and all these different ideologies and all of that foolishness. No, 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 no. You're going to see, you know what you're going to see called the church? You're going to see a body of baptized believers who all speak the same thing. Hello? You're going to see a body of baptized believers who all speak the same 
thing. All these different roads to heaven, that's a lie. Ain't but one road. The Bible says the Holy Ghost will lead us and guide us into all truth. Didn't it say that? It will lead us into the truth. That's the only way to get to heaven. It's going to take truth. And so, yes, God will. God will do what he said he would do. And you're going to see it. You're going to see people from every denominations, probably, all these different denominations. You're going to see certain ones just come up. And they're going to look around and see that thing that they were in. That's not right. That's not God. And they're going to be looking around for their counterparts. And, 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 and you know that valley of dry bones where the knee bone was connected to the ankle bone and all that stuff? You're going to see all those, all that body start come finding their parts and coming together, unified in the faith. Amen. I can promise you that. Write it down, glory to God. If, and if you live long enough, glory, you're going to see it. Amen. If you don't turn your back on God, you, you'll see it. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, read, Pastor. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you mm -hmm. and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Okay, now, this is something that the church... This is something that the church really somewhat despises. This verse right here. Paul said he was made a minister. And he also rejoiced in his sufferings for them. But notice what he says here. Notice this. I want you to pick something out of here. I want to see if you can catch this. He says he rejoices in I rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Notice what he's saying here. I rejoice in my sufferings. Are you hearing that? But then he talks about the afflictions of Christ in my body for his body's sake. Are you getting this? Hallelujah. This is a teaching. This teaching here is one of the scriptures that must be used if you're going to teach the fellowship of his suffering. Paul is, watch this, he's saying, he's, in the, he's, he's talking about the fellowship of Christ's suffering. He has entered into the fellowship of Christ's suffering. Are you hearing God? He's in, inside of the fellowship of Christ's suffering. He's saying, first of all, I rejoice in my suffering. In other words, he is a, whatever suffering is going on, he's a partaker of it. He, that means the soul, is saying that I'm, 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 I'm a partaker of this suffering. Amen? Glory to God. And I fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ. The suffering that I am experiencing is the affliction of Christ. I want you to see that. Where are they? In my what? The afflictions of Christ are in my flesh. That's important. In other words, the things, you know, Paul was whipped and beaten and, you know, he, he, more than any of the other dis the disciples, he was, he was um, shipwrecked. Uh, three times, and he says he spent a day and a night in the, in the deep, glory to God, and uh, he was beaten with rods and left for dead. He, he, this man went through all kinds of things. Now, he called these afflictions of Christ in his body. In his body. In other words, this is Jesus Christ being crucified, or not crucified, being beaten again, being tortured again, in the body of, that it once was called Paul. Come on, are you, are you hearing God? That's what you need to see. You need to see that, that Jesus is in that body now called Paul. And he is, Paul is saying, we're suffering here. I'm, I'm in the fellowship of his, he, well, in, 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 when he wrote to the Philippian church, notice that's what he said to the Philippian church, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his 
suffering. This is the fellowship of his suffering. He's saying that I have I, these afflictions, that I've experienced all these beatings and, and imprisonments and tortures. All of these are the afflictions of Christ in my flesh. Oh, saints, you got to see that. You got to see that. That just that confirms that Jesus is living in that body. That's now Paul really understands. He understands his, his Damascus road experience. Remember on the road to Damascus, he says, he, Jesus, when he met Jesus, Jesus said, Paul, Paul, why persecuted thou who? Me. And I'm sure Paul was like, who in the world are you? You, you know, he, in fact, he asked him, who, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus whom ye persecute. Now, what was Paul doing? Paul was be beating Christians, throwing them into prison, having them killed. Glory to God. What? Jesus said, that was me. I was in that body. I was in the body of that young lady that you threw into prison. I was in the body of that young man that you caused to be killed. I was in Stephen's body that you had stoned, that you consented to his death. That was me, Paul. That was me. Are you, are you hearing God? And, and, and this is further confirmed. And you, I want you to start connecting the dots here. I want you to start connecting the dots here. Because one of the things that we're going to focus on in, in Founders Week is the teachings of Christ. Because everything that we're teaching now, Christ had to teach first. He had to teach first, right? One of the, one of the things that Christ taught, watch this now, and, and we, we, we gloss over this. We thought we understood it, you know, but we didn't give it the, we didn't give it the, the, the due. We didn't give it its due. Christ said that in the judgment, many will stand before him in the judgment, and he will say, depart from me. Depart from me. He said, because I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was naked and you didn't clothe me. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I needed shelter and you didn't take me in. I was in prison and you didn't visit me. And some, someone asked at the throne, when did we see you like this? Come on. When did we see you like this? He said, you didn't do it to one of my least ones. You didn't do it to me. So what is he saying? Glory to God. That was me in those bodies. Glory to God. I was in my people. I was in them. And when you rejected them, you rejected me. Do you, are you hearing God? He's preaching the indwelling of the spirit. He's preaching the fact that he and God will come. He said, my father and I will come and sup with you. Didn't he say that? He said, I, he told his disciples, I will return. I'll return and I'll come back unto you. Glory to God. And so Jesus is living in us and we're living in him. We're in him and he's in us. So I want us to get that. I want us to get that in our heart and get it in our minds and, and let it be forever before us. Let's keep it before us that this body is the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ. He is in these bodies. And that's why, glory to God, that's why he, he, he can say things like, he can say things like, Paul, why do you persecute me? Because he's in the body of every Christian. Every real Christian, Jesus is in that body. That is so powerful, saints. Because, because when, we, when we stop we, we stop compartmentalizing, you know, uh, putting Jesus way over here somewhere in, in, in some, some invisible place in, in, in the body as if he has no effect on the body. This is what this teaching is about. We act as if Jesus has no effect on the body. But if you read this verse prior to this one where, where it says that, that he will present us, he, his desire is to present us unblameable. Is that right? Yeah. What does he say? Unblameable and something he uses two other adjectives. Provable. Unreprovable and holy. Mm -hmm. The fact that he's in that flesh 
means that we can be holy and without blame and unreprovable because this body does not prefer sin any longer. We've got to understand that. We've got to know that. Watch this. He, keep reading. He gets, he gets really specific here. Whereof I am made a minister mm -hmm. according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Mm -hmm. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations but now is made manifest to his saints. Now, this is a mystery. Now, if it's a mystery, you tell me how do you understand it so well without a revelation from God? Mm. Come on. You just can't pick this Bible up and read it and understand. I've been reading it for 50 years, over 50 years, and I'm just understanding some things in it. Come on, saints. Why? Because a mystery, not, even, not only the mysteries of the script, but the script itself got to be revealed by God. That because it's spiritual. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. And you know what? Carnally minded people cannot understand it. You don't have to be a, a carnal man in the sense that you're not saved. That's carnal you're not, if you're not saved. But if you're carnally minded, same, same way so. You will not understand this word of God if you're carnally minded. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you think, if you, if you think that you can read this with intellect and understand it, mm -mm. and I find that a lot of, of pastors, a lot of preachers, um, some preachers, they are reading the scriptures with their intellect. And their assumptions nature. They assume and they presume. And this is something you got to be very careful not to do. Don't assume, don't presume. This, because the moment you start to assume and pre presume, you begin to spiritualize. The scriptures must interpret themselves. We are, it's not lawful for us, for man, to interpret scripture. It's not lawful for, for, for us to take the scriptures and say they mean this and they mean that out of our own opinions. We must let the scriptures say what they mean. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. And I've heard so many preachers they, th that, and I, 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 I just need to make this very clear. I, I need to make this very clear. I, I, I know I'm setting myself up I, for, for criticism here. Uh, I run the risk of, of people thinking, well, you know, Whatever, but I have to say this, and I and and because it's just the truth, um, God does not work outside of His order. I don't care who doesn't believe that, but God does not work outside of His order. If 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 God worked outside of His order, then we would have a whole lot more people knowing the Word of God. We wouldn't have all of these, all of these uh, denominations and, 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 and uh, divisions, uh, diversity of beliefs. We wouldn't have that. But because God works inside of his order, and that's difficult for you to believe. It's difficult for you to believe. You know why it's difficult for you to believe? Because your little heart says, how is it that the church has been going on all of this time and, and, and somebody like a Dr. Banks has the audacity to say that a, most of that stuff is, that's been taught over the years is wrong. Well, it is wrong. It just is wrong. Now, if it's right, if it was right, why are you so blessed now? Why, are you, why, why is the word that's coming forth now bearing witness with your spirit? Why are you getting a quickening in your spirit? Why is your, the Holy Ghost that's in you saying yes? Why is your spirit leaping and saying yes, that's God. That's the voice of God. One of the pastors yesterday said, said you know, 
that that they uh, he can't be swayed. It can't be swayed because I'm hearing God. I'm not in BT for personality. I'm not following a personality. I don't follow personalities. I'm there looking for God and I found him and I hear him. I know when I'm hearing God. Hallelujah. That blessed me. Praise you, Jesus. That, of course, that really blessed me. One of the, one of the ministers that was here in the fast track said, said that, I mean, he's just, he's just, he said his whole life has changed just from one day. He says his whole life has changed. He said the scriptures are just, boom, they're alive unto him now. They've opened up to him. Glory to God. So a set of the pastors asked me, said, Dr. Banks, you got to come to our home. We just, we, we, you got to come. You know, one of the husband and wife teams, said, Dr. Banks, you, you just got to come. Praise you, Jesus. That this word is opening up people's hearts. It's opening up their lives and, 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 and their spirit is bearing witness to it. So, yes, I will say that much, much of what we receive was not God. Much of what's being preached in the church today is not God. And you know the thing about this word he, that, that God has given us? Amen. And, 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 and it's not about the fact that he gave it to us because there's some more us's out there somewhere. We just, don't, we just don't know them yet. Praise the Lord. But I don't believe for one moment that we're the only ministry that, that, is, that is preaching the truth. That is just not. God don't leave himself without a witness. Amen. Glory to God. I believe that out of the mouth of two or more witnesses, every word is established. So there's got to be somebody somewhere. Amen. Hello. Yeah. Glory to God. And so, so now, if, if, if God is, is, is establishing this word in us, glory to God, why do we have to feel like, almost like we got to apologize for it? It's, you know, people try to make me feel like I got to apologize for being an apostle. You, you, you know, no, I, 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 I can't do that. I can't do that because this is the truth. And it's the truth that makes you free. It's the truth that liberates God's people. Glory to God. And so, yes, I can say it w that with this word, let me show you the difference. Let me show you, let me show you, the, let me show you what's going to happen. And I tell you what's going to happen? Glory to God, because my first gift was that of prophecy. Let me tell you, he said, manna. Let me, t let me tell you what's going to happen with this word. Someone said to me, um, someone said to me, I, 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 they heard me make the statement uh, that when God brought this to me, I said, Lord, why now? Why you waited so long to give us a, 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 an understanding? of You gave us truth, but now you're giving us understanding of it. Why you didn't do this 20 years ago or whatever, you know? And they heard me say that. And, and, and that person, I'm trying to remember who it was, said to me, said, said, Doc, you couldn't do that. Because that grace message that's out there now had to come and run its course. Said because, because that grace message would have come to uh, try to uproot this. So all of, the, all of the, the, these false doctrines that are out there now, all of these false doctrines, dual nature, this erroneous grace doctrine, as Mike said, there is a grace doctrine, but the one that is being preached now is, is just erroneous because it does not, it makes, because it makes provision for sin. Any doctrine that makes provision for sin is not of God. I don't care who it is, it's just not of God. God forbid us to sin. Glory to God. So if, if, if it makes any type of provision for sin and says sin is going to enter in, and, 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 and that the blood of Jesus has got, got us all covered, glory to God, and we're just going to waltz on into heaven no matter how we live. No, 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 no. That didn't come from God. That came from Satan himself. And, and, and the minute Christians are being beguiled by that, glory to God, nevertheless, it has to run its course. It has to get out there, and it has to reach its peak, just like the prosperity message did. All of those doctrines have to get out there and reach their peak. Now, let me show you the difference in this doctrine. I, I, I'm going to play the role of, 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 of Elijah in this. I'm going to put my God out there. I'm going to put my God out there. Every preacher, every preacher, 
that preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God got some men and women that love him that's preaching the gospel. I love the Lord, but I was wrong. I preached error for 12 years. I was wrong. So it's not that, that everybody that is in error is deliberately in error. Some people really believe what they are preaching. They believe it. It was handed down to them, and they just believe it. You know, I was one of those people, so I understand that. But let me show you the difference. See, see, there was a time, you know what we've come to now? We've come to the same time that Elijah was in. When Elijah, Elijah went before the king and he said, now, he said uh, you get all your prophets, all Jezebel prophets, get all the Jezebel prophets and meet me at Mount Carmel. As every preacher it is, meet me somewhere. Glory to God. Because if I'm if I am wrong, come and straighten me. Hallelujah. Come and straighten me. If this is not a revelation of salvation, then come and straighten me. But you know what the problem is? Let me tell you what the problem is going to be. The problem is going to be that this, this revelation of the mystery of God has no loose ends. It has no loose ends. And there is, no, see, let me, let, let me teach you something here. Let me teach you how you discern a false doctrine. If a, if a doctrine is intact, there won't be a scripture in the Bible that refutes it. Not one. If your doctrine, Clifton, is intact, I should not be able to find not one scripture in the Bible that refutes what you say about it. For instance, like, like uh, I was in, um, uh, the, the, the preacher said, preacher said this. I told you this before. He said, you will find, you can look from Genesis to Revelation and you won't find anywhere in the Bible where God ever gave a woman any authority over men. And he was standing right in front of me. <laughs> you will not find it. I looked up at him. I said, preach, preacher. Amen. And he was supposed to have been preaching on me, right? And so after the service, I called his son. I took his son to the side. I said, Did you, do you, does your Bible have Deborah in it? I mean, um, was not Samson a judge was not Gideon a judge that judged Israel and was not Deborah a judge that judged all Israel and the scripture made it you know God is just so good the scripture come down and say she judged all Israel <laughs> that, that, that means she didn't just judge the women <laughs> hallelujah so, so she was the authority. The Bible says she sat at the gate. So now, now, now watch this now. So if you use that to silence women, right, in the church, and then I come along and show you that. And not only that, I can take you to the New Testament and show you where God said you don't have the right to silence anybody. Where God called the word didn't start with you and needed to come out from you. Amen. Corinthians 14. So now if, if, if I can show you those scriptures, shouldn't that be enough? Shouldn't that be enough for a pastor to go back to his church and change his doctrine? Shouldn't that be enough for pastors to go back and loose their women? It ought to be enough. Glory to God. But if it's not, why isn't it? Pride and wantonness. Lust for something. Amen. You know, whatever it is. Pride. 
Glory to God. You know, some people just can't say that they were wrong. They just can't say they're wrong. Now, if I come forth with a doctrine, and you can, you got scripture that punches holes in it, then I need to go back to God and say, God, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. That's what you're going to see. You're going to see leaders not able to refute the mystery of salvation. They're not going to be able to refute it. You know why? Let me show you why. I can show you with your own selves. The scriptures that you're reading now are scriptures you've read for years. And now the meaning is leaping out at you. Come on. Is that the truth? Amen. The meaning is just leaping out at you. Scriptures that I haven't even touched on yet, but when you go home and study and read, now your Bible is reading different because you're reading from the perspective of truth. You're reading from the perspective of the understanding that God has given us. Are y'all y'all working with me? Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. I just needed to say that. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is a mystery. And God does not work outside of his Outside of his order. And he doesn't care who doesn't believe that. He said, what if some don't believe? Does that make the faith of God of none effect? God is not stuck because people don't believe him. Don't you ever forget that? You're not, you know, like, I'm not going to speak to her. And she might be, whoever it is you don't want to speak to, might be, you know, hurt or disappointed because you walked by her and didn't speak. God, <laughs> you do that with God. Don't speak to him. <laughs> okay. Uh, next. <laughs> That's God. God. God is not disturbed because we don't do it his way. You know why he's not disturbed? Because the scriptures say he already knows those that are his. Now, now hello. If, 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 if you put yourself in God's place, if you now had a whole bunch of people, all these people in this room here, and you knew at the end of the day, when it's all said and over, you, you know the ones that are going to be yours. So one of those that's not going to be yours, start acting up or acting out, you're able to dismiss that. You're able to ignore it. Because that's not mine anyway. <laughs> huh? You don't even have to entertain that. You don't, you don't have to entertain that. Because that's not mine. You know, this is how God deals. This is how God deals. Now, if Janelle is mine, and Nars is not, Nars starts to acting out, and Janelle now wants clarity or, or whatever, but Nars wants to debate. Nars wants to debate, but Janelle just wants some clarity here. Neither one of them understand what I just said. You know, they, they, they didn't, neither one of them might have understood, but Nars wants to debate. Janelle just wants some understanding. There's a difference. And, 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 God sit there and say, well, this one here, he'll, get, he, he'll let you talk. He'll give you your chance. Talk. And you just talk. Just talking. Glory to God. And God, what would you say, Janelle? Because he know that's not his anyway. So he turned a deaf ear to that. So he's, Janelle, what did, what did you need to know now? That's how God operates. See, some people know of God. Some of us know God. Some of us are his friends. Some of us know his ways. Are you, are you hearing? He turns a deaf ear to that. Because you, know you, you know how I know? Because he told us to do it. He told us don't debate. Didn't he tell us don't debate the word? Amen. So he turns a deaf ear to that. And he, he, he talks to this one that really wants some clarity here. That really is trying to get some clarity to, to, to move in him, to get closer to him, to come to know him. 
not to just, see, see, there's a different saints. Uh, you know, glory to God. When this, when I, why am I so confident? Douglas, let me tell you why I'm so confident. Let me just tell you why I am so confident. Let me tell, can I tell y'all why I'm so confident? Can I just share this with y'all? Why I am so confident? Because my God speaks to me. That's why God speaks to me. There's no way a flesh and blood woman could do what's been done in your lives. Only a God could do what has been done in your hearts. Only God. And, you, and, and, and see, let me, let, me, let me kill this devil here. You all are not, this church is not just coming together, you know, uh, on a social level. We are coming together spiritually. Yes, yes. We are coming together on a spiritual platform. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. We're coming together on a... These, we are becoming more and more spiritual every day. More and more sin is leaving this house every day. People are walking away from sin. How can a woman do that? How can a man do that? Don't you know it takes a God to do that? It takes a God to change a man's heart. It takes God's unadulterated word to have a man come and seek him out. Glory to God. When, 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 when Brother Douglas says, I got some questions, Doc. I got some questions for you. I want to talk to you. Got some questions. Glory to God. Amen. It take God. After all these years, he got some questions. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus, for the questions. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. It take God. He said, you can't come unless I draw you. You get, glory to God. God is drawing his heart to him. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It take God's word, honey. Don't know flesh and, can't no flesh and blood do this. It takes God. And this mystery would remain a mystery if God didn't speak to us. It would still be a mystery. Amen. Praise the Lord. It would still be a mystery. Now, what is the mystery? We're in Colossians 1, 26. Even the mystery which was hid. Even the mystery mm -hmm. which hath been hid from ages and from generations, mm -hmm. but now is made manifest to his saints, mm -hmm. to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, mm -hmm. which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Woo! Which is what? Christ in you. The hope of Christ glory. in us? Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Does that seem to take on a, a new meaning now? Is that, is that taking on a more profound meaning? It's, it's, it's as if we always knew that. We always said it. But somehow we're saying it now. That he, we, we, we're cognizant that Christ is in us. He's in us, and being in us, that gives us the hope of what? Glory. What is the hope of glory? What is the hope of glory? <laughs> See, there is a return of Christ. There's a return. Hallelujah. Paul said it in Philippians. Let's go there. It's our, my last scripture. In the book of Philippians, um, let's see what's chapter. The third chapter. Look at the 14th verse. 
Philippians 3, verse 14. Mm -hmm. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You, this is a man that's already saved. Mm. He's already saved. But he's saying, I'm pressing toward the mark of a high calling that's in Christ Jesus. What is he pressing toward? What is he pressing toward? The hope of glory. What is the hope of glory then? That, that, mark, that mark of the high calling, the prize of the high calling of God. You know what that is? That's to be found in him when he comes. Yes. To be found in him when he comes. Notice now the scripture says that it does not yet appear what we shall be, but when he comes, we know that we shall be what? Like him. Now when Jesus comes back to set up his kingdom on the earth, Paul said that's when we'll be glorified. Because the scripture said it doesn't appear yet what we shall be, but we know that when he comes, we shall be like him. This mortal is going to take off mortality and put on immortality. This corruption is going to shed and we're going to put on incorruption. We're going to have our new body. And our new body will be like his. Will be like him. It will be a glorified body. Come on, somebody. And, 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 and think about this. Think, I want you to, oh, man. Hallelujah. I want you to just consider that the sons of God, are the only, only creatures in the universe, in any, uh, any universe, that God is permitting to receive worship. The Bible says angels will bow down and worship us. Gentiles will come and worship at our feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There will be none higher than the sons of God other than the Godhead itself. Hallelujah. Can you imagine being in a world where nothing in that world can hurt you? <clears throat> where you reign supreme. That's glory. That's glory. That's the riches of his glory, honey. That's, that's, that's rich. All the, the stuff you look, you're trying to get here, the, all the money and, and the houses and the land and all that stuff that you're going after in this world, that's nothing compared to what shall be revealed in us. That glory that shall be revealed in us. To be a son of God. To be in Christ when he come. That's the prize. To make it. You know, the scripture says that, that the, the, the race is not the pride. You know, when you, when you it's to the swift, it's not. The race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but he that does what? Endure. That's what Paul is explaining here. I want to endure to the end because I want to get the prize. He said the prize is not given unless you cross the finish line. Come on, somebody. I want to cross the finish line so that I can get the prize. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to be glorified with Christ. I want to have my glorified body. Don't you want your glorified body? Glory to God. I want my glorified body so I don't have to worry about asthma. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't want to worry about no asthma attacks. Glory to God. Amen. I want, I want my glorified body. Glory to God. So that, so that there will be no impediments. I want the power of a son of God. Do you realize that, that Jesus, when they, when, 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 um, when they were going to stone Jesus, they, they, as he preached one message, his first message in his own hometown, and his hometown people were going to throw him off a cliff. Hallelujah. And the Bible say he walked right among them. They didn't see him. That's the kind of body I want. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want that glorified body. Amen. And that's, that's the hope of our glory. That's the thing that's supposed to put a smile on our face. When we think about it, we're supposed to encourage one another think, and, and talk to one another about what's to come. 
about the millennium, about the reign of our Christ, his return. Those are the things that we're supposed to comfort each other with. So we, we need to remind each other that the sufferings of this time only endure for a season. Glory to God. But after a while, it's going to be over. Praise you, Jesus. And Jesus is going to come back. He's going to come back and receive us unto himself. Glory to God. That, that one day, that sky is going to roll back. And our master is going to be up there. And he's going to say, come on up higher. Glory to God. And we're just going to go on up to meet him in the air. Hallelujah. Leaving this old world behind. Praise you, Jesus. So this mystery that God has given us, this mystery of Christ in us, is supposed to help us live holy while we're here. This just the knowledge of it, Ricky, the knowledge of it. God said this to me many, many years ago, 20 some years ago, and I didn't understand it. He said, you need the knowledge of God. I said to my church 25 years ago or more, we need the knowledge of God. There's something we are missing. We're, we're missing the knowledge of God. There's, there's a knowledge of God that we don't have yet. I don't hear it yet. I used to tell them this 25, almost 30 years ago. I used to say to the church, promising those all way back. I said to them, I said, there's a knowledge of God. God keep pricking my heart with it, but he, he's not telling me what it is. He's not telling, but I know that there's something missing. There's something we need to know. And every year, God would give us a little peace, give us a little peace, give us a little peace. Every year, he'd give us a little peace. And then after he done gave us all these pieces, he said, now let me explain to you what they mean. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it's, 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 like, it's like you give, you know, you had this big puzzle here. And he gave you all the pieces of the puzzle. Then one day, he just comes and said, let me show you how to put it together. There's a formula here for putting it together. Let me show you how to put it together. And he comes like a robot and start putting it together. Amen. That's what God has done for us. That's what he's done. He's taken this mystery and he's, he's putting it in our hearts, piecemealing it in our hearts. And let me, let me say this to you. This is the time. This is the time right here, right now. I say this to all of the members of this entire ministry. And all of those of you that watch by the way of television, this is the time to hear God. This is the time. Now this is a time when you can miss him easily. Easily. Let us not deceive ourselves. Let's not deceive ourselves. This is not a time to turn a deaf ear to God. Because God is talking. He's talking. And when God talks, things happen. And when we don't hear him, when we don't listen to him, things happen to us. You'll be someplace that you won't recognize. You won't even know how you got there. This is not a time for offense. It's not a time for offenses. It's not a time to be offended. It's not a time to, to, to have iniquity in our hearts. This is a time of purification. It's a time for purification. We, I'm going to take the leaders up. I'm going to take this, this, this senior leadership up. I'm going to take them up on a, on a fast. We're going to sit before God. Then we're going to come back. We're going to come back and minister. I'm going to take the leadership up. I, I, I said, Lord, this is so precious. This, this is something that we can't just business as usual. We got, to get, we got to nurture this. We got, to, we got to hold this as precious. Precious. This is a time to sanctify ourselves to the truth. And I'm going to ask my leaders, I'll be, I'll be notifying you, we're going to go into a shut-in at my home. We're just going to shut in before the Lord. And we're going to hear God. This has been ordered by God. 
It's been ordered by God for us to sit in before him. And then let's come back and bring the people up. We're going to bring the people up before the Lord. But the leaders need to go first. The leaders need to go up before the Lord because this thing is precious. You know why? You know why the leaders need to go up? Because to whom much is given, much is required. Leaders, we got to be on our tippy toes. We've got to make sure we don't dishonor God in any of this. We've got to walk worthy of this calling, this revelation. We've got to walk worthy of it. Glory to God. And that, though, that senior leadership, glory to God, that is, you know, heading up major entities in this ministry, glory to God, and pastoring, pastorates, we're going to sit before the Lord and let God, let God endow us with this message. I want us to come out of there with an anointing. I want all the leadership to come out of there walking in an anointing like never before. I had the vision years ago of the leaders in Bible teachers. I saw them walking in the church, but their feet were not touching the ground. They were about at least four or five feet up from the ground. And I looked and I said, they're walking, but they're not on the ground. And the Lord said, they're walking in my spirit. Hallelujah. That's where we're going. I want to make sure that every leader walks in this spirit. It's not enough for us just to know this. We got to make it our life. Amen? Amen. Clap your hands and tell them thank you. you been blessed I'm going to do something I don't normally do on Sunday morning are there any questions are there any questions about this word or the direction of the ministry No one has a question. This doesn't happen often. Everybody understands this word. Everyone understands this word? Praise you, Jesus. And there, and there are no questions. Okay, well, how did I know Sandra Hugh was going to come forth with a question? It wouldn't be Sandra if she didn't. <laughs> I just hope I can articulate it properly. Um, okay, if we, I just need clarification because I'm still not 100% clear on um, the body, the flesh. It says the, f the body has no desires, no emotions in itself. It comes from the soul. But my question is this. Um, the soul influences the flesh. Like when you were a natural man before salvation, if a person was an alcoholic, the body, the soul desired the alcohol, but didn't the flesh get addicted to it so that that evil concupiscence was in the flesh to want, you know, to sin and so on, but to want alcohol, right? So when you become born again, correct me if I'm making any error in here, right? Now, when we become born again, there is a circumcision of the flesh, the soul died, it was made holy, I understand all of that. I understand the circumcision of the flesh. It was made holy and perfect. No problem. But what if that saint should peep out and sin? 
say for instance, they, um, or even if somebody decided to drug them. And there are some substances today that you can just take it one time and you become addicted to it. Now that, let's use that example. So they were um, unknowingly given this substance and it made them become addicted to it. But they didn't want it. It wasn't by choice. Does the, and the, will the body know, I think the body now craves that th thing. But the person, the soul doesn't want it. So what I'm trying to say is, does the body itself crave sin? Just like how if you're outside working, you'll get thirsty. You, you have a thirst. You understand? The body is saying, I am thirsty. So do you understand my question? Mm-hmm. Good, explain. Because <laughs> you said we have to wrap things up. We have to tie up all the loose knots. And I have to reconcile that within myself, mm -hmm. you know, in case... I have to give an explanation for that. I need to understand that. You got about four questions right there. Um, <laughs> let's try to pick them apart. Um, if the body is, let's say, um, there's a scripture in, in the Psalms, 42, I believe, says, my soul panthes after thee. Uh, just like the... As the deer panteth after the water, so does my soul pant after thee. Amen. The deer pants after the water because he's thirsty, right? And the soul is panting after God because he's thirsty. That's what that is, is saying. Now, let's take that into the natural, like the deer. Let's take that into the natural, like the deer. Um, the soul and the body were one. It made, it made up the man. The, the, remember, the body, the soul became a living soul. It was a living soul. Why was, why was it alive? Because it had a body. It had a body. And see, when you start taking... Um, how can I explain this? Um, let's, let's look at fornication. I'm trying, I'm trying to exp answer your question, but I'm going to go this route. Because I'm trying to go with things that's in the scripture. I'm trying to answer it with scripture. You take fornication. Um, where does the lust come from? Wrong thinking, right? You can think, so a man thinketh, so he is, so is he. So, so you can think and produce lust. Now, when you produce that lust, what is lusting? What, what is it that, what is it that, um, that you want? When you produce lust, what is it that, 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 that what, what is it that wants and what wants? It, when we're talking about the issue of fornication, right? And we say now that, that uh, James said, I, I'm trying to stay with scripture to answer your question. James said that, um, that if a man is tempted, he's drawn away by his own lust. Is that right? So that means that Satan didn't create that in him because he doesn't have Satan living in him. So how did, where did the lust come from? His own thinking. I can look upon a man and I can look upon him as a brother in the Lord or I can look upon him as a potential partner, you know. And, and uh, so now, it, did the body do that? Or does the soul give interpretation? The soul gives interpretation and the body now follows suit. It has to, the soul is the one that is, is um, instructing it's the one that has the appetite. And, but how does it satisfy the appetite? It satisfies its appetite with the flesh. That's how it satisfies its appetite. That's what, that's, that's what um, if, uh, for instance, God gave the, God put the soul into to, to a body, right? Then that body is able to go over here and, and, and pick a fruit off a tree and bite it 
and taste it. And the soul says, that's good. It gives interpretation to what it's doing, for what it's experiencing. The soul gives the interpretation. Or the soul may, or the body may pick another fruit and say, mm, I don't, the soul says, I don't like that. It went into the same body. But the body didn't make the distinction. The soul is the one that made the distinction to say, I like it or I don't like it. You, 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 you understand what I'm saying? Now, let's say something happens to the flesh, like she's explaining. Um, an accident. An accident happens to the flesh. Um, I, might be, I'm, I might be sitting here and something, someone walks by and, and, and uh, accidentally cuts my hand or something. I didn't want to do that. My soul didn't want to, c to cut my hand, right? This is something that just happened externally. But it happened to the flesh. It happened to the flesh. But it's the soul that says, Woo, my hand hurts. My hand hurts. Let me show you something. The soul dictates to your brain because your brain is the control center for the body, right? Hello? Your brain is the control center. I think uh, uh, Colleen's little boy explained this to her the other day. Amen. <laughs> he said the soul dictates to the brain. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and, um, so now, if, when, the, when the soul, this, cause when I say dictate to the brain, the soul is the one that tells the mind, the, the flesh of mind, what to think and how to think. It dictate, it controls the thoughts of the, of, the, of, the, of the mind. So now, supposing, supposing you were brain dead, what they call brain dead, you don't feel anything. Doesn't matter what's going on, you don't feel anything, right? What is brain dead? What does that mean? It means that the body is the body is unresponsive to any feelings or any emotions or, or whatever, right? The same way so with the soul being taken out of the flesh. If you take the, the soul out of the flesh, there's no responsiveness. It feels nothing because it's not alive anymore. It's, it's, it's not alive anymore. Now, in the case of say, an addiction, like she was, because that was a very good question, very, very good question. Let's say in the case of an addiction, um, she had a couple of questions there. She only meant one, but she had two or three in there. Um, let's look at an addiction wherein um, a person is addicted to, to drugs. That's a good one. A person is addicted to, to, to crack cocaine. Like, uh, and she don't mind me saying this, Charlene, Charlene was addicted to crack cocaine for 13 years. Now watch this. This, this is what God is trying to show us. She was, a, she, was, she was addicted to crack cocaine for 13 years, high every day for 13 years. Had to be high every day. Had to find some drugs every day. Now, she walked into the church on a Monday night when we were having a life, our first lifesaver. First lifesavers, Jeanette. First one. We, she walked in, and the guy, the, the night we named it Lifesavers. The, and the way it got his name, the guy had a pack of Lifesavers. They were trying to think of a name for the group. They, they were all ex, ex, they were all ex drug addicts. And they were try, trying to think of a name for the, for the group. And the guy had a pack of Lifesavers. And, and the guy said, what, what, why not? Let's call it Lifesavers. And, uh, and so that's how I got his name. She walked in, and those ex-drug addicts, John Jenkins and those, they prayed for her. Philip Davis, they laid hands on her, prayed for her. I can't, they, they, well, they were praying. Somebody called me out of the office. I think they called me out of the office and said, Pastor, come on. I heard them out there praying or something, and we all just prayed for her. She received the Holy Ghost that night and never been high since after 13 years what happened to the flesh it was addicted but now when jesus stepped in it the law of the spirit of life was more powerful than the law of sin and death so now 
that she mentioned it, Sandra mentioned it, that want now, that desire that the soul had for that crack cocaine wasn't there anymore. It wasn't there anymore. The addiction that she had was due to the fact that the soul desired it. It liked it. It liked it. And no matter what, it wanted it. And so she continued in it until Jesus stepped into that flesh. And when Jesus stepped into that flesh, the addiction was broken. It was broken. Now, there are some things that, that can clinically happen to your flesh. Like you're saying, something, somebody can do something to you, and, and you didn't want that to happen, but they did it to you. Is not that the same as contracting a sickness? A cold, even. A chicken, chikungunya. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can contract something. You can contract something that you really didn't, you weren't trying to, you had no intention, you didn't want that, but, you're, but it's in your flesh. That, that goonia, chicken, them, them goonia people, uh, <laughs> that, 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 that chick V virus is in the, it's in the flesh against your will, Right? Huh? And it can remain in your body for two years. That's no, diff that's, that's no different than anything else. S something can be induced in your flesh. And that's why we, we pray and we ask for healing of the flesh. You, un you understand what I'm saying? It's the same, the same, way, same, same difference. Amen. I got another question here. Please explain... Colossians 1, 24, what does it say? And fill up that which was behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake. I didn't preach that well enough. Huh? I didn't preach that well enough. Fill up behind the afflictions of Christ. Jackie, you want to answer that one? <laughs> the afflictions of Christ in my flesh. Hmm. <laughs> I thought you might. Give her a microphone, please. Give her a microphone. Hello. I've always loved that scripture and for sure it's definitely one of those scriptures that we can definitely put our finger on to say Christ lives in this body. Mm -hmm. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost and um, so everything that I'm to go through if I'm walking in the spirit and it's the agenda of God mm -hmm. Um, and we know those that live godly shall suffer persecution. And when God saved Paul, he told Paul all the things that he was going to have to suffer for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. So um, it's definitely a fellowshipping of the suffering of Christ. Mm -hmm. Because Christ's work on the earth is not finished until the mystery is complete. My Lord. Because there's the collecting of the church, the gathering right. of the church. And uh, the gathering of the church is where the suffering continues because that's where um, I see that, you know, he saved us mm -hmm. and he's in us and he's given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. And you just said it, no man gets saved unless he hear. And no one can preach unless he sent. And God will send us even like he sent those first apostles. And they were boiled in oil and flogged and killed and beheaded and put on the Isle of Patmos. But they did it for the furtherance of the gospel. But the, further, the gospel going out was to gather the church. So it was Christ suffering, mm. bringing in the church. And it's going to happen until the church goes um, is complete because the 
the great commission to go and make disciples. So it's as you labor and stay up at night and disciple people till all hours of the night, or you hear of a saint that needs prayer and you um, don't sleep or you fast, that's the sufferings of Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's for the sake of the church because that scripture says, for the church. Mm -hmm. So I, I've, because I also have loved that scripture, it really is very precious to really see Christ dwells in me. And that's the hope of glory. Amen. And, and he has work to do. Yeah. His agenda is not finished mm -hmm. until the last of the, ch the church. He said, until that mystery is complete. Amen. So Praise we got some suffering to suffer. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. That was a very good explanation for that verse. Any other question? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, saints. I hope you guys have been blessed today. Have you learned anything? Amen. We're taking it bit by bit so that we can learn as we go. Praise the Lord. And, um, and expect to suffer some things, especially persecution. Just ex expect it because it's going to happen. If this, those who live godly shall suffer persecution. And as Jackie said, that is the evidence of Christ being in you. That's the evidence of Christ living in this flesh. Praise the Lord. Who's moderating? Is it on you? Praise you, Jesus. Bless the Lord, saints. Oh, let me say this before I do retire uh, to my seat. Um, the, those of you that are in the... Um, that signed up for the virtual pastor and virtual evangelist. I think you better get, take care of your obligations. Amen. Um, and saints, I don't have, I don't really have a whole lot of con uh, control over that. I asked Pastor Mike to handle that. Amen. of this world, Lord, that they be saved, Father. You send a word, God, Lord, that you will send your Holy Ghost, Father, in the name of Jesus, to yes, speak Father. to hearts, God, even our young people, God, Lord, even as the enemy is after the young people, Father, Lord God, so are you, Father. You are yes. after them because you yes. said in your word, Lord, that you call the young because they are strong. Hallelujah, saints. I hope that we have been sincerely blessed with the message today. But there has been a song on my heart, which I think if we all adopt what this song is saying, then we will be assured of partaking in God's glory. And that song is Rooted and Grounded. Hallelujah. I know it's a little old song, but as Doc said that, you know, these old songs still have life hallelujah rooted and grounded in the name of the lord rooted and grounded by his holy word if you want to go to heaven
that has been coming forth for the past couple of months leading up from um, World Conference. It is in my spirit that the word that is here now is designed to remove any doubt of where we are spiritually. It is also designed to ensure that we can go all the way. The last scripture in Philippians that was read today said, I will press towards the mark of the utmost high calling. So we have been given the ammunition right now that will allow us to be able to press. The word is life. The word is what nourishes us as saints. But if we are not rooted, if we are not grounded in that word, then we will not be able to press towards that mark. Because we seek to attain and to partake of that glory when Christ return. As I shared last week, I said that the only cure for death is the resurrection. We are now living in the land of the dying because as long as we are alive here in this world, we know that there's one path that we have to take and that is death. But we want to inherit the world of the living. And that world is not what we call the world today. That is when Christ returns. Then we will be among the living. And there are two states. We either receive damnation or we hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. So we have to ensure that the word that is coming, the, this enriched word, this word that, has, that carries its own life. And I'm so glad when I hear Doc just tell us what the other ministers have stated, that she's not presenting herself. She's presenting the word, and that's all we need. We need the word, and we need that word to be manifested within us so we can press towards that mark. So if we know we are not empowered to press, then we have to cry out for salvation. Because unless we have Christ residing on the inside, then we cannot attain that glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, saints. I know it's almost lunch after dinner time, and the rice and peas might be waiting. But we have to ensure that it resonates in our spirit that the time is now. There's no more. Tomorrow I will do that. It is now. Because we know not when our soul will be required of us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Saints, um, I just wanted to remind uh, you that we are going to be fasting this week. We're going to start Wednesday from 6 to 6. We're going to start with 6 to 6. Then the next fast, we're going to go around the clock, 24 hours. We're going to start with a 12-hour day, then we're going to go to a 24-hour day for the benefit of those who are new to fasting. So I want us to start from 6 to 6. I want us to start praying for the knowledge of God to, 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 to resonate in our spirit. Let's, let's, let's pray for the knowledge of God, for people to understand the word of God, that understanding will, will, that our understanding will be enlightened. Amen? That we will, we will understand this word. And also let us pray for the, the word that is going to come forth at Founders Week because the Lord is opening up the new covenant through the teachings of Christ. I'm going to be teaching the teachings of Christ in the, in the, um, in the Founders Week that, that how from, this, from the mystery from Christ's perspective, from his perspective, 
And, and let me tell you something about that, saying when you teach, when you teach Christ, there's a whole new anointing that comes in the, in the building. It just, it, there's a new anointing that comes upon me when I'm, when I'm teaching the teachings of Christ. It's like I just step into a whole nother anointing and, and it's just a whole nother anointing comes in the room. Amen. It's something about just the words that Jesus himself spoke. Amen. And, and those of you that can attend, uh, what is it, Founders Week? If you can attend Founders Week, it, uh, someone said the other day, it's nothing like being there. It's just, it's just, it's just being there. It's just something under that anointing at that time. Glory to God. So if there's any way for you to be there, try to be there. I set it for to end Friday night so that we can spend Saturday traveling back to our our respected location. Amen. Uh, but I'm coming back home. I'm scheduled to come home that Saturday after the uh, Founders Week. However, we know that Bishop Lorna has gone up to be with her sister, uh, Donna. And Donna is very sick, saints. She's very sick. And I need us to pray for her and pray for our Bishop Lorna. Pray for her. Uh, one of the things is, 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 is blessed about this whole situation is that Donna has met Jesus and she's met him in a real way. And that's just, that's just awesome. Amen. And I've, I've had many a conversation with her and I'm confident in that. But it is, it seems as if she's not going to be with us very long. And so let us pray for Bishop Lorna because she has a lot on her plate and, and they are very close. And so, you know, she's hurting right now. Amen. She's hurting right now. And I want, you know, she puts her best on the outside, but she's hurting. And, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to have to go there you know, to, to spend some time with her and, and Donna as well. You know, I may, I'm, 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 I'm certain that's what I'm going to do before I come back. Amen. But, um, while we're fasting this week, let us fast for Donna. Let's call her name up before the Lord and Bishop Lorna as well. And that those pastors that are coming to this conference, because we had, we had a bunch of pastors there at the last one, the fast track I just did in the States. And I'm hopeful that we get as many or more this time coming to Founders Week. And they're, they're really working it. They're really working it. Glory to God. So let's pray for this meeting and that we can enlighten even more pastors. Amen? Um, leadership. Leadership tomorrow. I, I really would like to be relieved of it since we are, we are going to be on the fast. And when you come Wednesday... Be prepared to stay a little, if the Lord keep us, to uh, kind of like almost shut in. Amen. If you keep us a little while Wednesday night, come prepared. Amen. Hello. Amen. Bless the Lord. Yes. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 6 to 6. No juices. No coffees. No teas, water. And normally, saints, we don't drink water. Normally, I don't drink water on a fast. Amen. That's called a dry fast. Amen. But, um, okay, if you want, some, a lot of people are working, and, and they, they get dehydrated. Uh, they, 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 they get dehydrated. But let me tell you something about fasting. You can, if you give, if, if there's a, some people it happens on the second day. With me, it happens on the fourth day. Second and the fourth day. But the fourth day is when the Spirit really picks me up and carries me through the fast. If at, at the fourth day, and I'm talking about around the clock, I'm not talking about from six to six. Then if, if I fast for three the, the second day is usually the hardest. <laughs> Isn't it right? The second day is kind of the hardest because you're still, you're still acclimating your mind. You're, trying, you're bringing your mind under subjection. But that fourth day, the Spirit picks me up. It literally, literally, physically picks my soul up 
and and I don't want I can I can go I can go another 40 50 days whatever after that glory to God without eating anything around the clock so um and that's what we need right about now we need a long fast but I'm gonna try to break you in I don't want to just jump and say hey guys we're gonna fast for the next 14 days and nights amen so I'm just trying to lead you up to it amen Amen. Are you ready to worship God through the ministering of the offering? If you require a tithing envelope, please raise your hands. The hospitations are on the floor. And as soon as we ask praise and worship to raise a lively chorus, um, we're going to ask you to come with your offering. We have the outreach, we have the main offering, and we have BTBN. Praise and worship. Rooted and grounded. Love the Lord. Rooted and grounded. Eyes holy word if you want to go to heaven, heaven. be rooted and grounded. grounded rooted and grounded in the name of the lord rooted and grounded in the name of the lord Lord, rooted and grounded by the Holy Ghost. And if you want to go to heaven, got to be rooted and grounded. Rooted and grounded in the name of the Lord. Rooted and grounded in the name of the Lord. Heaven got to be rooted and grounded, rooted and grounded in the name of the Lord, rooted and grounded in the name of the Lord. We bless you, we magnify your name, Jesus. We lift up this offering before your God. And we ask you, O oh God, that you just bless it, O oh Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Um, we might have some guests who arrived after the initial announcement took place. So I'll redo it. Are there any first time visitors visiting with us today? Please stand. Thank you so much for coming, and I hope you heard from God today, and I hope that we will see you again when we have our service. Thank you for coming. All right, last.
All right. Um, Saints, you may have noticed that we only had the international announcements um, immediately before portraits. So we have shifted it. So we'll have the local announcements after service. So the funeral service for Sandra Graham's family members will be held today, October 5th, at 2 p.m. at the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Penwood Road, which is off Bay Farm Road at the bottom of Waterhouse. Well, I am reading this one, so let's see how I can turn this. Pastor Parks' uncle, <laughs> funeral would be this Saturday, that is Saturday the 11th of October. It will be at 10 a.m. at 38 Greenwich Road, um, that's right by the tank, like you're heading to Trenchtown. Um, we're reminding you that you turn off all cell phones as our service is being broadcasted and recorded at each service. So as you reach a sanctuary, please be reminded of that. And also, we require that all announcements should be submitted to the administrative office no later than Thursday of each week. All right, saints, that's the end of our announcement. Please stand for the benediction. Oh, I'm, my apologies. I forgot. Andrew. Sorry, you can remain standing because I won't be long. But, um, yeah, <laughs> I just bless the Lord. I am. I thought I was very, very fresh this morning when I came in, and then um, I felt a weight in my body. But, you know, God kept me up yesterday, and I give him praise. Uh, I just want to, this whole week, we're going to um, be telling different ones all over thanks, and we thank this particular congregation indeed for your very, very strong support, support yesterday at the Passion and Purity St. Catherine High. Um, man, the camera folks, I don't know how they do it. You know, they go all day and then pack up and come back and pack up again. I mean, it's awesome. You know. And, um, yeah, so we give God praise for what he did. Um, I don't know that we have experienced as much opposition in having a particular conference. But then the theme that we were using is prayer and work, conquer all. So the prayer... And your prayers and all our prayers and the hard work that we put in, 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 the, in the Holy Spirit, as he instructed us, saw us having great victory yesterday. And I believe a lot of hearts were deeply impacted with the, the message of the Word of God and also the focus on home economics as we looked at some very practical things on an educational standpoint. So we give God honor and we give God praise. And uh, for those who were there, you also were witnesses of what God did. Amen. So let's just give God a big shout of praise for what he did. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And of course, when we do a work with God, it lasts forever. Amen. God's works don't ever um, just go away. So let's just do the benediction at this time. As we bless you on your way out. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, be with us all and keep us faithful and true till Jesus come. God bless you. And Jesus, just hug two or three persons on your way out. Oh, sorry, this book in my hand, if you want to get one for your teens, you can get one. Really, really um, very good very impactful. It's just $600. Get one for a teenager. Get one for a teenager.